I want to welcome everyone to InfraDay in Nashville. Um, what an incredible time to be in industry. Um, very excited um, to have this panel here today. And thank you so much for the opportunity to moderate uh, the digital transformation session. Um, I'm very excited to hear from um, each and every one of the, the panelists that are here. Um, got some incredible public agencies, not only in the room, but on the stage here with me today. Um, I am a local Nashvilleian, and who am I? My name is Mark Gillum, all right? I'm with Procore Technologies. We are a cloud construction software. We help public agencies um, across the Southeast and across the country uh, manage all of their construction needs, all right? <clears throat> so with that said, today's meeting is not about me. Um, it's about the panelists and you know what technologies they are implementing um, to help not only with their planning, but their construction and maintenance as well. Topic for today um, is enhancing efficiency, improving services through digital transformation. <clears throat> All right. Um, additionally, we're going to discuss the integration of digital tools. <clears throat> All right. And I hope they're memorizing this. <laughs> Administration processes in order to streamline them better, <clears throat> enabling faster approvals and smoother workflows. I know the, the panel before us um, heard many of those members talking about streamlining uh, communication um, and better collaboration. So um, excited to hear what these uh, team members today will say. And uh, with that said, I will let them introduce uh, themselves individually. Um, start with you, Kendrick. Good morning. My name is Kendrick Vaughns, and I'm a native Nashvilleian. Uh, I grew up here in Nashville, so I'm a unicorn. <laughs> I have a son that's 10 years old and a dog named Jeeves that's 12. <laughs> um, I'm currently uh, IT director for the state of Tennessee. I've been there for 10 years now, and I support the Department of Human Services. I have over 25 years of technology experience in roles such as a network administrator, consultant, system admin, and senior IT manager. Um, in regards to digital transformation, uh, DHS uh, has gotten to the point where it's much more efficient as well as more customer focused. So we can talk more about that later, but I'm looking forward to the discussion. Good morning, I'm Kathleen Schwaber. I'm an IT Director of Project and Program Management at Nashville Electric Service. Um, I am a Northwest native, but very, very happy to be here in Nashville. This is our home we should have found a long time ago. Um, Mama four, um, I've been in the IT industry um, since about 2010. Got my start also in the public sector working for the King County District Court in Seattle. Um, my experience in IT is all public and it's all transformation focused. Um, so there I was on a mainframe um, transformation to a modern day case management system. Um, NES is involved in several modernization projects on the IT side, which is where I sit. There's a, an OT side that I don't get heavily involved with, but i um, happy to talk more about that as we get along. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah Van Warmer. I am the IT director for the city of Brentwood, so just south of here. I am not a Nashvilleian nor Northwest person. I am from Michigan originally. I worked for the city of Battle Creek, which is where Kellogg's is headquartered. And at one point, there's 47 cereal companies there. Just a little fun fact to get your morning started. Um, and so I actually came up through the GIS world, software, web development, um, so infrastructure, as far as IT infrastructure, not my forte. You do not want me coming in to fix some of your stuff, but I have really wonderful people that can. Uh, in Battle Creek, um, so I've been in Brentwood for about two and a half years. So in Battle Creek, when COVID hit, as we all experienced, we had to fast forward a lot of our digital transformation stuff. Battle Creek is a low to moderate income community. And so we had a lot of people that English was a second language. And so we, we had to put everything online right away, how to pay your bills, making sure that 
your water stayed on, that sort of stuff. And when we put that online, we had to work with a lot of community organizations to make sure all those things translated into um, Spanish. And we had a very large Burmese population there. So that's a lot of my experiences taking things that the community did every day. They took the bus to come to City Hall to pay their bills, but they couldn't do that during COVID. And so we had to really get super creative on doing that kind of digital transformation. And some of the projects we're working on in Brentwood right now is a preemption system that we'll probably talk about in just a little bit, but it's a, obviously a very different community in Brentwood than it was in Battle Creek. So that's, that's my history. Thanks, Mark. Absolutely. Um, thank you for that, Sarah, uh, Kendrick and uh, Kathleen. So awesome to have all three of you. Um, Want to kind of kick this off to, um, you know, where do we go in this discussion, right? So um, I'm going to stay pretty high level here and um, we'll, we'll see, uh, see where the journey takes us. So with that said, Kendrick, let's start with you. Um, you know, tell us about the landscape of your organization. Um, you know, what is, just think about that question, right? What is happening at the org? What type of, of technology are you utilizing? Um, from software, project planning, um, tied a little bit into construction as well. I hate overlapping that, but let's turn it over to you and, and just tell us, tell us what's happening. Okay. Well, as far as our digital transformation journey, uh, DHS basically moved from more of a um, services and benefits organization to more of a person and family centered organization. Uh, with that said, being said, in order to reach our strategic goal, we basically had to invest in newer technologies. Um, and by investing in newer technologies, we moved away from a lot of our old uh, systems that were mainframe and things of that nature to more distributed systems uh, that was a more modern uh, platforms and tools. Uh, to answer your question, as far as some of the tools that we use, um, in regards to IAM, we use Forge Rock. Uh, in regards to DevOps, we use the Atlassian suite of tools, Jira, and some other things, Confluent, uh, Nessus, and uh, several other things like Bitbucket and um, uh, Jenkins uh, for our pipelines in regards to DevOps. Um, we also, for our cloud environment, we are primarily a Amazon Web Services environment, and we also have a footprint within Azure uh, as far as our cloud environment. Um, as far as some of our other things, we have call centers, and our call centers are on the Nice in Contact platform, uh, which has been very beneficial for us. So we have a variety of different tools that we use that has helped us reach our strategic goal of being more uh, efficient and customer focus. Kendrick, stay with me on those questions. Um, love this topic right here. So um, let me dig a little bit deeper to what was that path like? You, you described this a little earlier, um, implementing new technologies and new software. How, how long has this journey been for you? Um, that journey started, believe it or not, in 2017. And it has been a long journey, but we have had partners along the way because none of us could have accomplished <laughs> what we did without different partners. Uh, we worked with Deloitte and KPMG and several other partners along the way, uh, and we had different milestones. Uh, so it was an effort that took everyone in-house, but we did have to get partners outside to help us along uh, the digital transformation journey. Our first system that was migrated from on-prem to the cloud was in 2021. Uh, it was our one of our child support systems and that was fully migrated over from on-prem to the cloud uh, and it was a journey. Um, and then we had several others that were migrated along the way. But uh, we've gotten much more modern uh, systems now uh, that help us be more customer focused and efficient and, and streamlines a lot of our services to help the citizens of Tennessee. Yes, sir. Absolutely love that journey. Uh, and for those, you know, additionally, for those public agencies that might be in the room listening, 
Um, when we discuss digital transformation, Kendrick is a, a prime example here, right, of how we get there. That path began in 2017. Um, in 2021, you began to make that jump over to the cloud. So a uh, very interesting path. Uh, gosh, I, I want to learn so much more about that, right? Uh, but I want to give some of our other panelists a shot. Um, very much enjoy hearing that. Kathleen, as we kind of move on here, um, we'll kind of prep you. <clears throat> kind of tell us about, you know, Nashville Electric Service. And uh, before you begin to, I kind of give you some hints to get, get going here. So not only tell us the landscape of what's happening um, at your organization, um, you know, what technology are you utilizing and how have, have you impacted the org from that standpoint? So a little bit about NES for those who aren't familiar. We're an electric utility. Um, we are a distributor. We don't generate power. We buy it from Tennessee Valley Authority. Um, we have approximately 430,000 customers in Nashville and Davidson County. Um, Nashville is a very rapidly growing city. And so part of our, our you know, daily fight is keeping up with the growth. So we have... Um, there is a line in the sand because of, of NERC and other federal regulations where the operational tech is maintained by a different group. I'm on the IT side. Um, but we see the infrastructure of, of power distribution and a stable grid being a real driving force on the IT side. Things like automatic meters, right? We want to improve our connectivity to our customers. We want to be proactive about managing outages, like ideally, we would know that you have an outage before you even know and call us. We want to be resolving it before we have to hear from you. That requires an incredible amount of infrastructure, um, both on the, the hardware tech side on the ground and then what is inside our building to support that. And I think on, on our end, we're doing um, a lot with customer-facing technology, whether they know it or not. Um, we are coming around to the last year of a really significant customer billing upgrade. It's taken several years to get to the finish line. Um, I think Megan made a great analogy on the last panel that if you expect your project to take four years, expect 25% of that to be in the requirements and discovery. Um, these projects take an incredible amount of time for the incredible outcome you want. Um, something we've learned along the way too is that with I'll just use that customer billing system as an example. To transform that system, your IT house has to be in order. Like we had to transform our processes. My, I run the PMO. Um, right now we are focused on our operational processes. Our, we need to standardize our charters. We need to standardize our plans. We need to focus more on requirements. Because everyone's in a hurry to get something done but we don't want to stop and do that design work up front. And so we are doing kind of um, less tech housekeeping right now on my team. We're doing more process housekeeping because the tech has moved so fast. We haven't really kept up in a great way on our own. We have amazing tools. We're a service now shop in IT. Um, we have been for close to five years. And up until this last year, we were just tracking projects out of it. We weren't managing projects out of it. We didn't manage incidents and requests, um, changes. Now we're really using this product we made a huge investment in um, that we could have been doing earlier, but other constraints put that on hold. So it's, I think to your point of transformation, what tools are we using? I, I tend to look at, well, how are we using them? Your tool is only as good as you're putting it to work. And, you know, we, the global we, we get enticed by things that are shiny and new and buzzy and, oh my gosh, it can do 12 things and I can see the inside of my fridge. You know, it can send me my grocery list, um, but am I using it? Am I getting what I paid for? Is that really changing my life the way I wanted it to? So that's, we're now internally focused on, okay, we have this great thing, but let's make it work for us. Let's not be a worker for it. Absolutely. So Kathleen, love that. Um, love your experience with NES as well. A couple points to, to tap on before we move on to Sarah as well. So 
Um, you described rapid, rapid growth. We all know what's happening around here in Nashville um, and the, the Southeast as a whole. Um, you, you described adapting quickly, right? I heard from the last panel um, as well what happens here with lack of workforce. We're all experiencing that as well. I've been in construction the entirety of my career and this, this uh, challenge presented itself well before COVID. The, the labor challenge. So how do we get there? This panel is describing that today in digital transformation. We'll make that leap there to the other side. You also had a couple key points I wanna uh, remind you of as well. This is awesome. I have not heard this yet with technology or adopting software. Um, you described your IT house has to be in order. That's pretty key, right? That's something I'm gonna take with me from this meeting. Um, that's incredible. I've not recognized that just yet. If you don't have the team to implement, um, it's, it's gonna be a challenge, right? Um, and then specific outcomes, right? At the end of this game, when we've purchased this technology, uh, Kendrick said it before as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, what are we hoping to get in? Did we get there? Is it is it working? So. Kind of some things to think about. It's an awesome panel, right? Um, but thank you, Kathleen. Uh, Sarah, let's let's move on to you. Let's pick on you for a second. Uh, while me and Kendrick are the local Nashvillians over here as well. Uh, but thank you for joining us. Um, tell us about the city of Brentwood. Um, what's going on in the org, right? And what technologies are you guys adopting, not adopting? Um, <clears throat> And what, what's going on here? So for anybody that's not familiar with the city of Brentwood, it's um, one of the wealthiest cities, obviously. And in Tennessee, we are very fiscally conservative. We are very uh, staff conservative. Um, I worked, for, well, as I said, I worked in Battle Creek. and It was the same size, but we had twice as many employees in Battle Creek as we do here in Brentwood. Um, our city manager very much feels that we're not going to be on the cutting edge, but we're not going to be the last ones to adopt anything either. A lot of our projects actually that we're getting ready to ramp up and we have put together a team to do this are going to be AI based actually. Um, our city manager said we are not going to be the first, but we're not going to be the last ones to adopt this. So we have recently just actually put together an AI team within Brentwood to say, how are we using it? Where are we already using it? And where can we use it? Um, one of the projects actually that we're talking about, this is really interesting, is we have a couple of dispatchers actually that have been trained to be very, so we have our own 911 center. Williamson County has a centralized and we have our own in Brentwood. Um, but some of our dispatchers have been trained to be so black and white on how they ask questions based on the call. And sometimes it's just not that black and white as we all know. And so there's AI technology that you can train on all of the 911 calls to actually prompt our dispatchers to say, hey, this is what we're hearing, make sure you ask these questions. And I was talking to our chief of police and I was like, so what happens when AI says, well, did you do a little rain dance to make sure that their heart started beating? Like, what happens you know, when the AI goes wonky on us? And so these are a lot of the things that we're starting to look at, but we have a commission that is also very um, conservative when it comes to this stuff. And so they don't like us to use the word smart, so we, we say we're doing these technology projects where we're changing. I mean, we, we consider 911 critical infrastructure. And so, you know, it's a little different infrastructure than your pipes and that sort of thing. But um, so that's some of the projects we're looking at AI. One of the other projects we're doing right now is we all know that traffic is nuts around here and we need our fire trucks to be able to get through intersections. So we're doing a project that is actually very technology based. We have fiber to all of our intersections. And so we are putting in systems in our fire trucks. They'll get the call from the CAD system. And then from there in the fire truck itself, it'll start to preempt the lights. It'll start to say, hey, I'm two minutes out. Start to change the traffic patterns. And so that's a project that's really quite cool because we can kind of tailor it to how we need it to work, how we want it to look in the fire engines. So we have a couple partners that we're working with on that. And the really nice thing is that we work very closely with the city of Franklin on these things too. And they sort of are 
in the lead on it, so they get to make all the mistakes. And then we go, oh yeah, that's sorry, that was stupid. We're not gonna do it that way. So it's it's really kind of cool that we actually have these partnerships already in place. We have really good relationships. I know they talked about that on another panel about the relationships that we have in place. So it's a lot of those projects that are forward thinking, but we're not gonna be the leaders <laughs> per my city manager. So um, what else, Mark? You asked me something else and I'm missing I, something. I did. Let me tell you some key points you just said yeah. and, and uh, let's regroup just for a moment. Um, you described cutting edge, right? Love hearing this. And uh, to the three panelists that are on the stage as well, um, just, just compare what they just described here. We have a state agency, a large public utility, and a city municipality. And where I'm going with this, and we're going to stay with you, Sarah, is, you know, you've described implementing AI, mm -hmm. all right? You're integrating smart traffic tools into your intersections. Y'all, we didn't set this up either before this meeting. This is just where we're going. Um, what type of challenges, you know, have you begun to face? And, I, and we'll come down the line too, but Sarah, let's start with you. What type of challenges have you faced while you've implemented these tools uh, with a, a city the size of Brentwood? Um, political and, <laughs> and uh, tech. And, right. So actually to go with your first point, we have the state, a large utility, and the city. The bonus to being a city is that we can make mistakes faster. We can make them a lot faster than a state can, and I'm sure Kendrick would wholeheartedly agree with that, is we can go, ooh, that didn't work, and two weeks later, we're fixing it. The state makes that mistake, and two years later, they're like, okay, we reeled all that back in, and so that's the bonus to being our size, um, is that we can make those mistakes, So we and we do run into them. As I always tell my team, the expectation is that we're gonna fail at this. We just did testing, actually, on the preemption system last week, and one of my techs missed something, he was like, oh, I didn't change the firewall rules that would work. And he email or messaged me on Monday morning. He's like, I owe you guys a huge apology. I wasted everybody's time. I was like, whoa, 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 time out. Like, we don't do apologies. The expectation is that we're going to fail. And then we're going to go, oh, well, that didn't work. What do we do next to fix that? So we run into those challenges because failure is IT. I mean, we face it every day. Um, and then you, you fix it. Um, politically, challenges we face is that we are in a very conservative community. And so sometimes we approach these smart projects uh, with a little bit of hesitancy. We can be on the cutting edge, but we do live in a community that all eyes are on us when we do some of these projects and they don't want Big Brother watching them, right? So when we talk about smart projects, we're like, what, what does that mean? What data are they getting from us? So we always have to make sure we take into that cybersecurity component too and making sure that we're explaining to the commission that a lot of this data is anonymized so that we don't really see um, but part of our preemption project will be a connected vehicle piece to it too. That's phase two. So does that help answer the question? Love that. Um, <laughs> that is an a, enormous answer right there. Um, and we all know what we face anytime we implement any type of new technology within our agencies today. So Sarah, I love that. Um, City of Brentwood is lucky to have you in your role. Um, Kathleen, I would like to hear from you too. Um, let's stay with that topic. Uh, what type of challenges have you faced so far um, and have you overcome them? So for me personally, I think the challenge I've faced the last year, year and a half has been governance. Um, as fast as everyone wants to grow, they want to do it in their own way. And while it ultimately achieves the business strategy, I don't think we're talking as closely as we could be. And <laughs> IT owns a large part of the governance, so AI is a big one. And we're having conversations at the chief level now of what does that look like for our organization? How do we want to govern it? You know, this is something that we need to put in the guardrails before we open the doors. And we haven't always done things that way. It's been let's open the doors and then we'll figure out the oh, gates. We'll put the fence around it after the gates open. Um, and we're just really trying to be more thoughtful and, you know, we add these really huge systems, customer billing system, what is our data strategy with that? How are we gonna report on that? You know, what's the tax on our system of reporting on all of this data we're collecting? Um, what kind of access do we give everyone to it? Um, so I think that is our challenge of um, 
you know, that, that becomes the cog and that I think has a bad taste of it's, it's going to just slow us down, right? I don't, I don't want IT to govern my work because it's just going to slow me down and I just really want to get there. Um, but the governance is really important for stability and security and longevity of our, these investments we're making. We have to know what is our plan to keep it alive and to protect ourselves along the way. Love that. Awesome key points right here. This is awesome to hear just, the challenges are so much different from each organization that I'm hearing from. Um, you know, yours are governance, Sarah, you described that. Um, and then collecting and reporting on data. Um, I don't, I don't want to preach to the, the uh, audience today, but we don't just collect data. This team is not just collecting data within their agency to, to put it in a, a corner. We need to be able to report on it. So um, that said, love that, Kathleen. Kendrick, really interested to hear your point of view on this. You know, you've implemented a number of systems um, and software within your org. What type of challenges have you faced as well, um, and how did you overcome them? Sarah, she brought up a good point earlier. Uh, the state does not move as fast as a city. <laughs> uh, some of the challenges I've had was uh, one of the key, I'm gonna stay on that, is the fact that knowing that the state, as far as the procurement process and regulations that we have to deal with, we can't move as fast. So what you have to do is be proactive. And the way I like to be proactive anytime I have a project is basically uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, making sure you have a team in place. Uh, so we knew we wanted to move to the cloud instead of having everything on-prem. Uh, we knew that we wanted to have some systems as far as uh, older programming languages. We wanted to have some newer applications with newer programming languages. So speaking about being proactive, what we did and what I did was I brought in a team that had those skills, uh, knowing that that was the future and maybe some of the people on the current team don't have those necessary skills. So you bring in someone that have cloud skills. You bring in someone that can program in Java instead of uh, COBOL. Uh, and then maybe there's some people on your current team that's willing to upskill and learn some new things. So you help them with training and stuff. So you wanna be proactive, uh, especially when you know that things are gonna take a while, so you just can't wait around the things happen, you gotta be proactive. So I think that was the biggest thing that I did. Um, I had a smaller team when I first started with the state, but we knew we had some strategic goals that we wanted to, to meet. Uh, so we basically were proactive with hiring the right people, bringing in the people with the right skills, a partner with the right uh, consulting companies to provide us with the right guidance. So being proactive has helped us overcome a lot of challenges that we knew uh, was there. Love that. Love that, Kendrick. You said a couple of key points, um, but you kept coming back to one word, um, which is being proactive. <clears throat> um, so in, in summary of that, I mean, um, just facing the challenges and when you implement these new technologies, we, we know there, there's actually two words there for us. <clears throat> we know that we're gonna face challenges um, and we know that we need to accelerate our path. Um, Sarah described collecting data at intersections. Um, some of this stuff can be scary for the public. I think the more and more we educate all of us as an industry, that's why we, we're here today, um, the smarter and, and better that we're gonna become. Um, final thoughts here, right? We got about one minute left. Um, if you're going to give advice, you know, to other public agencies that uh, might be thinking about implementing some sort of new technology or software, what comes to mind? Like, what, what advice would you give them? Um, hey, here's what I brought on a napkin and share to you today. Kendrick, let's start with you. Uh, sure. Uh, my biggest advice is to get in line with whatever your business is is doing. For example, uh, I'm the IT director, but I support Department of Human Services. So 
the IT that <laughs> we provide has to be strategically in line with the services <laughs> that Department of Human Services provide. So make sure that you, whatever you're doing as far as IT, you are in line uh, with what your business needs are. So that's my biggest advice. So work closely with your business and provide them with what they need. Kendra took my answer. <laughs> um, part of my job description is business relationship management. And in governance, we have the annual work planning. We're trying to constantly make sure that everybody's marching toward the same objectives. And I think that there is a tendency for IT to put themselves and for others to put them on an island, that IT is not you know, woven into the fabric of our business. It didn't always used to be that way, but now it is. Technology is as much a part of the business as the customer, as human resources. And so I think it's really important to just be at the table with your business teams. Um, even on the construction side, I, you know, come and bring everyone to the table because everyone has a stake in the conversations you're having. Um, I think that the work we do is way too important to miss those early conversations and those partnerships. Um, I can't remember who said it. I think it was a gentleman from Deloitte, but you, you build credibility in little drops and you lose it in big swaths. And it's those little drops, those little seats at the table where you start those conversations and humble yourself to hear what your partners are saying. That's where you build that credibility and it makes coming to the table easier every time. And probably to build on what Kathleen just said, for us, it's so important that the true frontline users are actually involved in the project. It really doesn't matter, matter if the directors are, because they're not the ones that use it and actually know their software. I would like the person that's standing at the counter taking those payments to actually be at the table versus their director, because they're the ones that know the nuances of their software in and out. So that's always been my experience. It's like, put them at the table. I don't care about your director. They actually don't really know what you're doing day to day, and they don't need to. So that's my piece of advice. Well, guys, I, I love that. Um, Sarah, fantastic final thoughts. Kathleen, um, <clears throat> love your answer on that, too. Be at the table, right, with your teammates. Um, and then <clears throat> Kendrick as well. I, all three of you are pioneers in this industry. And as a reminder to everyone in, in, the, in the room today, uh, we're not just revolutionizing public infrastructure with our tech. Um, we're not just digitally transforming items, we're in the middle of it. <clears throat> so everyone is a part of these newest technologies, so I'm so excited to see where we go from here. Um, thank you to everyone's time today, and uh, that concludes our, uh, our session. Yeah. Thank you.